In this tutorial, I will show you how to create this procedural lumpy clay material in Blender. And then after we create the procedural material, I'm going to show you how to join it together into this custom node group. So we have the overall scale of the material, and then we also have color 1 and color 2 to change the clay color. And then we also have the amount of subsurf. And then we also have the subsurface color. Then we have just the noise scale, and then we have the noise detail. And then we also have the Voronoi scale. And then we have just the bumpy scale then we also have the roughness of the clay then we have the bump strength that's the little bump on the surface and then finally we have the displacement strength and if you'd like to help support this channel and purchase this material you can get that on my gumroad store and my patreon page with the links in the description and you can also check out my ultimate blender procedural material pack if you'd like to purchase all of my materials and if you'd like to learn how to create any of my procedural materials you can check out my blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on youtube so let me just show you what i have set up in the 3d viewport if you want to set it up the same way that i have so i pressed shift a and i went here to mesh and i added an icosphere and and then right behind me after you add the icosphere here on the subdivisions I turned it up to 6 and that way we have more geometry for the displacements to use. But then the default primitive objects in Blender are quite large. This object is a little bit higher than an average human when using the real life scale in Blender. So I scaled the object down by 0.2 and then using control A you can apply the object scale. And I did the same thing for the monkey head so I pressed shift A I added a monkey head and then I scaled it down by about 0.2 and then you can press Control a and apply the scale and then also you can press Control 2 and that is going to give the monkey a subdivision surface modifier and then with the object selected using the object context menu you can just shade the object smooth and then i also added a camera and i just pointed the camera at the object and if you select the camera and go to the camera settings, I turned the focal length up to 80 just so that the camera is zoomed in a bit more. Now for the lighting, if you click right over here on the world properties, I added in the abandoned hopper terminal 01, and this is a free HDRI from polyhaven.com, links in the description if you'd like to download it. And I downloaded the 1K HDR version. So once you download the HDRI, you can add a new world, and you can click here on color and choose environment texture, and then you can click on the open button and add in the HDRI and this will give some nice realistic lighting and reflections and then I also added this area light right here and if you go to the object data properties I turned the power up to 50 so that it was nice and bright and just pointed it at the object and then if you click right over here on the render properties here on the rendering engine I am going to be using the cycles rendering engine because I am going for realism and I want to use the material displacement so that the clay looks all lumpy and then also if you go down here to the color management I'm using the view transform of filmic and the look to very high contrast and then if you go into the rendered view you can see the background is transparent so I can't see the HDRI so if you want to make the background transparent you can open up the film tab and then just check mark the transparent button so you can select the object and if you click right over here to go to the shading workspace you should have the shader editor here in the workspace so i'm going to click on new to add a new material and i will rename the material and then i can click and drag and i can drop the same material on this object as well and then if you open up the side panel here and go down here to the material properties and you want to go down here to settings and then you want to open up the surface and under the displacement this is set to bump only but we want to change this to displacement and bump and that way we're telling the material that it can use the displacements. And then I will also be using the Node Wrangler add-on in this video to preview the different nodes. So if you don't have the Node Wrangler enabled, you can click on edit and go to the preferences. And then over there on the add-ons tab, just search for Node Wrangler and you can check mark the Node Wrangler add-on. So let's start by making the main texture. So I'll press shift A, I'll go to the search. I'm going to search for a noise texture. Let's drop this down here. And then because we turned on the Node Wrangler add-on, we can hold down the control and shift key and select different nodes. And that'll preview the node on the object. And also with the noise texture selected, I'll press Control T. That'll add the texture coordinate and mapping. And I want to use the object coordinate, so let's put the object into the vector. And the object coordinates is going to place the texture on the object more evenly. And then let's change the noise texture settings. So I want to turn the scale up to like 18. I also want it to be very detailed, so I'll turn the detail to the max of 15. I also want to turn the roughness up, so I'll turn the roughness to like a 0.6. And then I do think it would be nice to have a little bit of distortion so I'll turn that to 
0.1. Now this noise texture isn't very interesting, so I want to mix it with another texture to make it look a bit more bumpy. So I'll press Shift A and I'll go to the search, and I'm going to search for the Voronoi texture. Let's drop this up here, and I can control Shift and select it to preview it. And let's take the vector from the mapping and put that into the vector of the Voronoi so that it's using the object coordinates. And then I can change some of the settings. So I want to see many more of those dots, so I'm going to turn the scale up to like a 25 so I can see many more of those dots. Now, I want to mix the Voronoi texture with the noise texture. So to do this, I'm going to press Shift A. I'm going to go to Color, and I'm going to search for the Mix Color. Let's just drop this here. And I want to click on the Mix, and I want to change this instead to Linear Light. And then I can Control Shift and select it to preview it. Now, I want to take the Voronoi texture distance, and I'm going to put that into the Factor. And then I want to take this noise texture, and I'm going to put the Factor into Color B. And then here on Color A, I want to make this a darker color. So I'm going to make it kind of like a mid-gray color. Color. And if you want to use the exact same color that I'm using here on color A, you can go to the hex value and you can punch in 6A, 6A, 6A. So now we have this much more interesting texture, and the noise texture is more contrasty because there's some light areas and some dark areas, and then we have kind of those gray dots all over the texture. But I want to make this a very lumpy clay material, so I'm going to mix it with another noise texture, which is going to be much larger and have less detail. So I'm going to select the noise texture, and I'll press Q. Control Shift D, that'll duplicate the node, but keep the wire plugged up. And I'm going to stick this down here. And then with the noise texture selected, I'm going to hit the backspace, and that's going to reset the noise texture. So we can now Control Shift and select the noise texture to preview it, and then let's change some of the settings. So I'm going to turn the scale to like a 14, and then I also don't want any detail, so I'll turn the detail to zero. And then here on the roughness, I will turn this up a little bit, so I'll turn it to a 0.6. And then the distortion, I will turn that up to just a 0.1, so it is slightly distorted. So we now have this very lumpy texture, and I'm going to mix that in with these two textures. So I'm going to select the mix node, the linear light. I'll press Shift D to duplicate it, drop it here. And if I click on the linear light, I'm going to change this to lighten instead. So it just adds the light values. Then I want to take the noise texture factor, and I'm going to put that into color B. And let's Control Shift and select the lighten. And then I want the linear light to be going into color A. So now you can see there are those lighter and darker areas, but you can also see the more noisy detail. And let's also turn the factor down a little bit, so I'm going to turn the factor to 0.4. So we can now put this into the normal, so let's drag these nodes back, and I'm going to put the result into the normal to give it some bump. But then I need to convert this to normal data, because this is color data and this is normal data, so I'll press Shift A and I'll go to the search, and I'm going to search for the bump node, and let's put this in between the lighten and the normal. And then we want the lighten to be going into the height value, and that way it's going to convert it to normal data. So I can control Shift and select the bump, you can see there's the normal data, and I can control Shift and select the principled shader. So now it looks nice and bumpy. But that is actually way too strong. I want it to be pretty smooth, so I'm going to turn the strength to just like a 0.1 on the bump, and that way it is much more subtle. So now let's also put this into the base color. So I'll take the light and result, let's put that into the base color, but then I want to control the colors better, so I'll press Shift A. I'm going to go to the search, and I'm going to search for a mix node. Let's drop this here, and I can change the float to color instead. And then I want to put the mix between the light and, and the base color. And I actually want the result to be going into the factor. So now we can use color A and color B to make the two main colors for the clay. So right here on color B, I want to make this kind of like a brown color and a bit darker. But I don't want it to be very saturated, so I'll keep it kind of in the middle and make it a bit darker. And then here on this color, color A, I also want to make this a more gray color. And if you want to use the same colors that I'm using, then here on color B, the hex value is going to be 2F2928. And then if you want to use the same color that I'm using for color A, the hex is going to be 757075. Now I want to make this a bit more contrasty because it's kind of hard to see any difference in the color. So I'll press Shift A, I'll go to the search, and I'm going to search for a color ramp, and let's put this between the light and, and the mix. So we can now drag these two tabs together, and that's going to make it more contrasty. And if I drag them really close to each other, now you can clearly see the difference in those two colors. I don't want it to be that contrasty though, so I'm going to drag the white tab maybe to about there, and then the black tab I'll drag maybe to about there. But now you can see there's some little darker areas on the clay. Now I also want there to be some variation in the roughness, so let's take the light and result, and I can put that into the roughness. But then I want to make it look a bit more dry, right now it looks kind of wet, so I'll click on the color ramp, 
I'll press Shift D to duplicate it and I'll drop it down here. And then with the color ramp selected, I'll hit the backspace and that is going to reset it. So if I make the colors lighter, that is going to be more rough. So I can click on the black tab here and click on the color and I can make this brighter and you can see it's going to be much more rough now. And if you want to use the same exact color that I'm using for the light gray, the hex value is going to be 87, 87, 87. But then I do want to be able to control the amount of roughness in the custom node group. So I'm going to press Shift A. I'll go to the search and I'm going to search for the hue saturation value and let's put that between the color ramp and the principled shader. So now this value if I turn it up or turn it down that's going to make it lighter or darker and so that's going to make it more rough or more shiny. Now this clay doesn't look very bumpy right now and that's because we haven't put any data into the displacement. So what I'm going to do is take this light in let's take the result and I can put that into the displacement. Now we need to convert this to proper displacement data because this is color data but this needs to be displacement data. So I'll press shift A, I'll go to the search, and I'm going to search for the displacement node, and let's drop it right here in the wire, and then I can drag this down here just to get it out of the way, and I can also hold down the shift key, and I can right click and drag over the wire and let go, and that's going to add a reroute, and I can bring the reroute over here just so that the wires are not overlapping. And then to convert this to proper displacement data, I want this to actually be going into the height value of the displacement. And then here on the scale, right now it is way too strong, so I'm going to turn the scale way down to like a 0 0.02. But now you can see it looks kind of lumpy. Now you can see right now it's kind of going in. It's almost like inverting. And so there are some places on the monkey where the vertices are overlapping. So to fix this, I'll press Shift A. I'll go to the search and I'll search for a color ramp and we can drop this before it goes into the displacement. And then I actually want to flip these two values. So I'll drag the white tab over here and then I'll drag the black tab over here. But then I just want to drag the black tab out a little bit so that it's not popping out quite as much. So I'll drag the black tab to about there. Now this is kind of looking like clay, but there is one more really important thing, and that is that I want to add some subsurface scattering. And this way it'll look a bit more smooth and it'll allow some light to go through the object. So right here on the subsurface on the principal shader, I'm going to turn this to a very small number of 0 0.007. So now it just has a little bit of subsurface scattering and it just looks a little bit more fleshy. And then here on the subsurface color, I want to make this kind of like a dark tannish color. And the subsurface color that I'm going to be using is a hex value of A07F65. Now you can see the subsurface scattering is looking very red and it kind of looks like skin, but I wanna change that. So I'm gonna click here on the subsurface radius. And then I'm gonna change all of these values on the subsurface radius just to one. So the subsurface radius values are gonna be red, green, and blue values. So if you turn it up, you can see that's gonna be more red and more green and more blue. I'm just gonna turn them all to one so that there are even colors of the subsurface. But now you can see just by adding that little bit of subsurface, it makes it look more smooth then it makes it look much more like clay. And then of course, if you wanna change how lumpy it is, you can change the scale so you can turn this up and you can see now it's gonna be much more lumpy. And also you can change this scale value right here on this noise texture to make the lumps bigger or smaller. So that is the procedural material. So we're now gonna join it together into the custom node group. So I'm gonna click and drag to box select all the nodes except the material output and I'm gonna press Control G. Control G will join it together into a node group and I can press the tab key to go in and out of the node group. So I'm gonna drag the node group over here and I can drag it out to make it bigger and then I can rename the node group to Lumpy Clay. And then I'm gonna select the node group and I'll hit the tab key to go into the node group. And if I press the N key, that'll open up the side panel and I can click right over here on group and you can see there are inputs and outputs. So what I first wanna do is click on the BSDF and I wanna click on the arrow to bring it up so it's on the top. And then I want to click on this to rename it, and I'm going to rename it to Shader because I like that better. So you can see outside of the node group, we now have Shader and Displacement. Now to make all the custom values, we can go back into the node group with the tab key. And if I go right over here, you can see there is a group input. So we can plug all the values up to the group input that we want to control outside of the node group. So let's first do the scale. So this mapping node is being plugged into all the textures. So we can use the scale to control the entire size of the material. So let's put the scale into the group input. But then I want this to be one single value because outside of the node group, it is three values. So if I go back into the node group and click here on scale, I want to click on the type and I'm going to change this to float instead. So it is one single value. And here on the default value, I also need to turn this up to one. And then if I go outside of the node group, you can see the scale is back to zero. So I just need to turn that to one. And then that is the now the correct scale. So let's go back into the node group. 
Now I also want to add the different colors. So if I click on the group input, I can drag this over here. I'm going to drag it up here and then I can take color A. Let's put that into the extra socket and then also color B. We can put that into the extra socket. And then if I click on this to rename this, I can rename this one to color one, double click on this and I'm going to rename this to color two. So now outside of the node group, you can see we have the two different colors. So let's go back into the node group with the tab key. Now I also want to be able to control the subsurf. So right here, there's the subsurf. Let's put that in there and then let's also also take the subsurface color and I can put that into the extra socket so we now have the subsurface controls and then I also want to control the noise scale so let's drag the group input right back here behind the noise textures and then let's take this noise texture here let's take the scale and I can put that into the extra socket and then if I drag this down I can click right here to rename this and I'm gonna rename this to noise scale I also want to be able to control the noise detail so let's put the detail into the extra socket and then I can rename this to to noise detail and then I also want to be able to control the Voronoi scale so let's put that into the extra socket there and then I can click on this and I'll rename this to Voronoi scale then I want to be able to control the size of those lumps so let's take this noise texture here this one is going to change the size of the lumps let's put the scale into the extra socket and I can rename this to bumpy scale then I also want to be able to control the roughness and so we can go back here to the hue saturation value and we can use this value to make it lighter or darker so let's take the value we can drag this here into the extra socket and then I can click on this to rename it and I'll rename it to roughness and then outside the node group if we drag the roughness that's going to make it more rough or more shiny so let's go back into the node group and I'm going to drag the group input down here and I also want to control the bump strength so let's take the strength I can put that into the extra socket and then I can click on this to rename it and I'll rename that to bump strength and then finally, I want to control the displacement strength. So let's put the scale into the extra socket and I can rename this to displacement strength. And then I can drag this back over here. I'll just drag it right here above the texture coordinate and I can hit the tab key to go outside of the node group. And I'll press N to close that side panel. So there we have it. There is the finished procedural material. So that's gonna be it for this tutorial. So I hope you found this helpful and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to purchase this material and help support the channel, you can get that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. Links are in the description. And if you'd like to purchase all of my materials, then definitely check out my Ultimate Blender procedural material pack. And if you'd like to learn how to create any of my other procedural materials, then you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. The links are in the description. But I hope you found this helpful, and thanks for watching.